Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 419 in your red pew hymnals for all the faithful women, verses 1, 2, and the last one. God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, let us call upon the Lord, confessing our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy One, we believe we are called to see the face of Christ in all, but we confess we often refuse to see Christ in some, for holding on to old resentments, for calling another enemy, for allowing the color of one's skin to influence us, for negating the other names by which you are called, for seeing borders as fences not invitations to exploration, for not living the truth that the whole world is in your hands. Lord, have mercy, and hear our silent prayer. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, you have placed within the, within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we might have open hearts, open eyes, and open ears today to hear that word and that truth as you whisper it into our ears. 
Grant that we might know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this good news and this life with all the world. I pray this through Jesus, the risen Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take a moment to share that peace with one another. Today's reading is from Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, concerning Rahab. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Go look, go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house, because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to see me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flocks that she had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the fords of Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that it is a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to Sion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites, east of the Jordan, whom you have completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord, your God, is God in heaven above and on earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family, because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. So she let them, so she let them down by a rope through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. She said to them, go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourself there three days until they return, and then go on your way. Now the men had said to her, this oath you made, a swear, will not be binding on us unless, when we enter the land, you have tied the scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers, and all your family into your house, if any of them go outside your house into the street, their blood will be on their own heads. We will not be responsible. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be on our head if a hand is laid on them. But if you tell what we are doing, we will be released from the oath you made us swear. Agreed, she said. Let it be as you say. So she sent them away, and they departed. And she tied the scarlet cord in the window. The word of the Lord. Right, I'd like to invite the children up.
kids are king. He's like, no, I found the toys out there. I'm not coming up today. All right, have a seat. They're still coming, the little ones. Hi. All right, so friends, if there was something you could do that you maybe were afraid you were going to fail, is there something you would do if you, had, if you didn't have that fear? Gymnastics, okay. Is there something you would do? What is it? The same thing as your sister? All right. Well, I would skydive. I think you can fail at skydiving unless you don't open the chute. So there was really no reason for me not to do it, right? Right. I just have to get over that fear. Well, the people in our story were a little afraid. They were going into the promised land, but there were people there that they had to drive out. But they knew that they wouldn't fail because they trusted in God. Okay? Now, oh, thank you. Have you ever met somebody and did something for them without being asked? Like Lydia. Lydia just brought me a communion wafer. Thank you. Oh, that's very nice. Her class classmate had a snack that they didn't like. The whole class? Oh, the whole class. That's even better. <laughs> they were complaining, so she shared her snack. There, you can have the communion cup. Anything that you've done that you've maybe helped somebody out? Catherine, have you ever helped anybody? No? Okay. I'm sure you have. You help me all the time with your sister in the nursery. So also in the story, there's a woman who helps the people that come. There were two spies that came, and she helped them for no reason other than she trusted in God and she had heard about him and how wonderful he was. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to know that we can do things without the fear of failing if we trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. That was awesome. <laughs> All right. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters, from... God, our Father, and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Off she goes. Scarlet cord, scarlet scarf, right? She's got it. Anyone here this morning ever been surprised by someone? Anyone ever been surprised by someone? Yeah, had someone that you maybe thought was going to be really nice, they just looked like a really nice person, but then they turned out to be a big meanie? Mm -hmm. Or vice versa, someone who looked like they wouldn't be a very nice human being, but then turned out to be like the kindest person you'd ever met. Anybody have either of those things happen to you? That is what happened to the two spies sent to scope out the land for Joshua. Now, Joshua, you may or may not remember, was appointed by God to lead God's people, the Israelites, after Moses died. Moses, remember, at God's command, had led the people out of Egypt where they had been slaves for 400 years. Then Moses led the people around the wilderness for another 40 years, and now, under Joshua's leadership, they were finally ready 
to enter the land that God had promised to them, Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land that they could finally call home. The only problem is that other people lived there. So Joshua sent two spies to scope it out. Lucky for them, they ended up at Rahab's place. And not only does Rahab tell them what they needed to know, that everyone was afraid of them, not only did she hide them from the king's men and send those king's men into the wrong direction after them, and then not only did she help them escape, but she confessed complete and utter trust in God. Did you hear that? In fact, it could be said that Rahab had more faith in God's plan than Joshua did. Three times in the chapter before the one that Linda read, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous, right? Be brave and courageous. Be brave and courageous. He needed a lot of reinforcing about all of this. And I don't blame him. I need a lot of reinforcing too. So I get it. And then even after telling Joshua, look, I'm going to give the whole land into your hands. I'm going to give it all to you and the people. Even after all of that, Joshua, he had to see it for himself. Wanted some assurance of what he was walking into. And so he sent those two spies to scope out the situation before they went marching into the unknown. Rahab, on the other hand, simply took God at God's word, believed God is really who God says God is and would follow through on what had been promised. And so she decides it's going to be in her best interest to be on God's side when this whole land takeover goes down. So she makes that deal with the spies to save their hides if they'll save her family when they return with their whole army. So she hangs what's been called the scarlet cord of faith out of her window. Her trust that God and God's people would keep them safe and stay true to their word. Fascinating, isn't it? How people can surprise you, right? How faith can show up at times in the least likely of people and places. Rahab, it turns out, is the truly strong and courageous and trusting one. She becomes a bridge between these two peoples and an instrument, a vital instrument in God's plan. Now after the battle, Rahab leaves behind her life of prostitution and she joins the Israelites. She marries a man named Solomon and together they have a son named Boaz. Boaz marries another foreign woman named Ruth. And together they have a son named Obed. And Obed is the father of Jesse. And Jesse is the father of King David. Which makes Rahab, this Canaanite prostitute, the great, great grandfather of the greatest king that Israel ever knew. Imagine that. It also means that she is a direct ancestor of Jesus the Christ. And she is one of only three women that are named in the 28 generations from Abraham to Jesus in the second chapter of Matthew. In fact, the New Testament presents Rahab as a model of faith. In the second chapter of James, Rahab is listed alongside Abraham as someone who modeled what it looks like to put your faith into action. And in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, she's lifted with, listed along with all the other great cloud of witnesses. The heroes of the faith of the Old Testament who lived without the full promise in hand, but who nonetheless trusted that the promise would be true for them. The great cloud that continued to inspire God's people to stay strong in their faith even when facing adversity. And here again, she is the only woman other than Sarah to be named. 
And she is the only Gentile, the only non-Jew listed in that list of heroes. Unlikely, right? Yet there she is. The Jericho harlot, as she is nicknamed often, on the A-list with Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, King David, and Jesus. Now the history books, you should know, only name people and places and events in order that they might alert us to what God is up to. So what is God up to through Rahab? God is showing us that faith doesn't have to do with your nationality or your gender or your job title. It doesn't look like someone in their Sunday best, necessarily. It looks like someone who trusts God completely. God is showing us that God will use who God will use. And it won't always be the picture we have of faith. And thank goodness for that, right? I once had a counselor that I saw for about a year and a half. And she was very clear that she was not religious. And yet God used her in an incredibly powerful way in my life. I was changed because of those therapy sessions that I had with her. And my faith was strengthened. My life was strengthened and, and renewed, really. Think about it this way. Because of Rahab, the walls of Jericho came down. Because of this counselor that I saw, the walls in my heart came down. And I will be forever grateful that God saw fit to utilize that woman in my life in that way. So, for those who are on the inside of this faith looking out, the question is, how do we stay open to the, boss, the possibility of encountering God in the life of anyone we meet so that we don't miss their sometimes surprising but incredible witness to what God is up to in the world? Amen? And for anyone who is hearing this and feeling like they're on the outside looking in, wondering if God could love someone who isn't churchy, who doesn't fit the mold, right? If you're wondering if God could love someone whose past is a bit colorful at best and littered with regrets at worst, or whose present is complicated, mired down, by the weight of many burdens. I'd like you to meet Rahab, your sister in the faith, who God lifted up as a model of faithfulness. Look no further. You belong here. You are loved and accepted here, in God's house, in God's family. And God can and will utilize your life to bring about amazing things in this world and in the lives of the people around you. For that, you can be sure. Amen.
strength of the Lord. Please rise and join me in our statement of belief. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and come in Jesus, the world made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us unite our hearts in praying for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, lover of all peoples, we give you thanks today for Rahab, Jericho's harlot. Through her faith in you, Israel came into a new land and a new day. Through her faith, we see that you are a God that loves without discrimination and we are hopeful. Fill us with the strength and courage of Rahab's witness and give us eyes to see you in every face we meet. Lord, in your mercy, Creator God, we pray for our world. We give thanks for the abundance that comes from the earth and ask that you shape our hearts to love the earth as you do. Be near to those who have lost homes and loved ones due to fire and flooding. Keep rescue workers safe. Heal the scars on the land that we have made. Lord, in your mercy, 
for the governments of the world and its leaders that the world would be led to dwell in peace, that good would prevail over hate, and people of faith could freely worship as their hearts direct. Turn hearts filled with bitterness to see and know that every face is a window to you. Every face is a child of yours, and as such is to be loved and respected and protected. Lord, in your mercy. For the sick and those in need, and for all who are weighed down in sorrow or despair, we ask that you surround them with your healing arms and fill them with your peace. Today we pray especially for healing and peace, for Sue, for Kathy, for baby Lincoln. We pray for good test results and peace for Jerry and Sherry. We pray for peace for families living in grief, especially the ID family. We pray for safe travel for all, and we pray for wisdom and discernment for our call committee. Lord, in your mercy. As we come to your table now, fill us with your life and grace that we might leave overflowing and so share your light with all. We lay our prayers before you, O God, trusting that you hear and answer all who call to you. Amen. So we come to God's table at God's command and at God's invitation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those communing with us on Zoom, receive the life of Christ with these words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those communing with us here on site, you are welcome to come forward and receive the wafer of bread and then a cup of red wine or white grape juice. Uh, there is a gluten-free station to my right. Please make your way to that station if you would like gluten-free. And the empties go in the baskets at the ends of the pews. We will commune the side sections first, front to back, and then the middle section, back to front. God's table of grace is prepared, and all are welcome.
now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Holy God, you are a God of such incredible abundance. We give you thanks for this bread of life and cup of salvation that unites us and fills us with your life and makes us one with all your people. We ask that you would send us forth into the world now to proclaim the power of your Holy Spirit and your redeeming love to all the world. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus, the risen Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you are able to sing our closing hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 733. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord with love. Thanks be to God.